How's it going? I'll do five dozen shrimp. What's up, Jacob here. Today I'm gonna to be showing you what I think is the easiest way to catch fish here in the Keys. And it's pretty simple. All you need is a chum bag and some chum like so. Fishing rod, I put on 30 pound fluoro just in case anything big eats it. Um, if you want, you can get away with like 12, 15, 25, 20. It really doesn't matter, it's your preference. Um, yellowtail a little more finicky, so if you're gonna chum for yellowtail, I'd probably throw the 12 pound fluoro. But mangroves will literally eat anything. You could throw 100 pound floral on there and mangroves will eat it so and then we got some live shrimp you don't even actually need live shrimp most fish will eat dead shrimp or frozen shrimp anyway so you don't need the live shrimp i just have live shrimp because that's just what i got and yeah it's pretty simple so what i do is i put that chum bag in there i put the chum in and i let it sit for about 30 minutes just till all these fish kind of get up here and start cruising around my chum line and then I start throwing casts in the water. I kind of give them a little bit of time for that chum line to marinate, just get those fish to come before I put some more of that commotion in the water and start catching fish. And then while you're creating out the commotions, sometimes bigger fish will come in like sharks or tarpon grouper, a barracuda will start coming and cruising by. So I keep a bigger hook, bigger rod with some bait on there just in case they come by so I can cast at those as well. So that's the setup right there. We got 30 pound fluoro and I can do a little crusher jig forget what ounce weight that is, but it's a little bit bigger than the usual ones I throw just because there's a lot of current here. Crusher jig, 30 pound fluoro. Chum in the water. All right, everybody does it different, but I like to hook my shrimp back here through the hard part of the back of their tail. They just seem to stay on a little bit better when I do that. I'm gonna shake this chum bag a little bit and get that chum flowing down this little canal. Send him back in the chum line. Let's see if we can get us a fish. Now, if you're coming to the Keys with your family and your kids and you don't really care about getting any crazy fish or keeping fish, this is probably the best thing for you to do because there's no way if you do what I'm doing right now that you don't catch fish. Like, it's just not gonna happen. Like, I could sit here and drop my shrimp right here and catch a fish in two seconds. I've been throwing in the back just to try to get some bigger ones, but I'll show you right now. I can literally just drop it right here and catch a fish instantly. It's as easy as that. So if you're fishing with your kids and you just want to catch some fish, this is definitely the thing to do. But make sure you tell your kids to be careful of those fins because they got some spikes that'll hurt pretty bad. They got one on their anal fin as well, one or two, I'm not sure how many. And then they got some chompers in their mouth and if they bite you they're not gonna let go <laughs> all right we finally got fish showing up there we go that's a mangrove come here buddy all right they're finally starting to show up Now mangrove only have to be 10 inches, but I'm probably not gonna keep any today unless I get some really nice sized ones. So this guy, this guy's like nine and a half. So even if he was 10, I wasn't gonna keep him because I pretty much only keep mangroves if they're 12. So there's just not a lot of meat when they're smaller. All right, I got back in. I don't know where my net went, so I'm using my hat to get these shrimp. So I got the shrimp hooked. I'm gonna take this line cast it out there a little bit give it a little bit time to sink down but also keeping your tension pretty tight just in case something eats it quick like it just happened I think that's a cuda that was either a cuda or a houndfish I'm not really sure <laughs> I saw him come snatch it he didn't really fray my line so because there's fish now in that chum line a lot of times you're gonna hit pretty quick so even when you're letting it sink you want to kind of keep your line pretty tight see like what happened there was I didn't have my line tight enough something ate it while I had slack there and he just took my shrimp off so 
goes to show that you really got to keep that line tight so earlier i went a little closer to the bridge and the current was just too strong i didn't think that my chum was really keeping a solid line near me and it was just really hard to get my bait to sink to the bottom so i moved somewhere where there's still some current but a little bit less current there we go that's a fish it's probably another mangrove i would assume look at all the mangroves following him see them all i don't know if you can see it on the gopro or not he's got all his buddies with him So this guy's honestly definitely a keeper. So this guy is, yeah, so he's 10, but I'm only gonna keep him if they're 12 or over. So put this guy back in. Little mangrove snapper guys, little chompers. We got a nurse shark right here, cruising around. Yeah, we're getting a lot of mangrove snapper up in here now. I don't see any big ones right here. They might be chilling in the back. There we go. There's another. This guy's a little smaller than the last one. He's probably eight inches. It's mangrove number four. This guy's probably a keeper. Nah, never mind. He's probably about nine inches. Right, eight and a half, nine. We will send him on his merry way. Hit, hit, hit. Oh. Oh, that broke me off. That might have been a cuda. So I could easily cast right here and catch one, but I'm going to try to cast it a little back and see if there's some bigger ones chilling in the back. Oh, big nurse shark. It's a big nurse shark swimming right there. I don't know if you can see it on the GoPro. That's really cool. There's a little nurse shark over there to the left. All right, getting hit, getting hit. There we go. There's a really tiny guy. That's, <laughs> that's one of the smallest mangroves I've ever caught. That guy's a baby. Not even as big as my hand. There we go. Got another bugger. Come here, buddy. He's got his friends chasing him. Barely hooked him right there on the lip. Quick line hook. Need him back in. Now this type of fishing I don't do often because you don't really get a much bigger fish. Oh, he's dogging me. I don't do that. My goal is to catch something other than a mangrove. Look how many there are. <laughs> There's like a ton here, and then where I have this one hooked, there's like probably 50 swimming after him. I'm going to see if I can get them to come closer to the boat. No, a lot just broke off, but you can see how many there are down there swimming with their buddy. So this one, once again, is probably almost a keeper, but so this guy's nine and a half. So you can tell even if they're 10 and they're legal, you're probably not going to get much meat off that filet. That's why I only keep them if they're like 12, like 13, 14. And this is a needlefish or a houndfish. Yeah, he jumped off. I don't know. I, I don't know if needlefish and houndfish are like the same thing. They just, once they get bigger, you call them a houndfish, but I'll just get one of these guys real quick. You. He was dead. I'm gonna see if any of the ones chilling right here are bigger. Let's see. These guys look a little bigger. Hey, 
he looks like one of the chunkier ones. He's legal, but he's tiny. There's another. That's definitely another keeper right there. He's probably right at 10. He's gonna go back in, grow up, and be a bigger keeper someday. Oh, all the fish just got spooked by something. Well, that does it for this video. Hope you learned a little bit. Hope you get out there and catch some fish. Stay tuned for the next one. Peace.